I wanted to do today's video for you because I know Mother's Day here in the US is right around the corner. It's literally this weekend. And I wanted to give you some support in how to interact with your mom to really start to create more of a connection and understanding. I also received a question from somebody on my email list who was asking about some of this work that I do around parents and she had a question around her mother specifically, which was all about boundaries and her mom, especially because she's a new parent and feels like she really wants to feel understood and not just resort to creating boundaries with her mom. And so she wanted some help to navigate this. And I thought this is a great opportunity for me to really talk to you about boundaries and our mothers specifically today. So when most people are talking about boundaries, honestly, when I hear what boundary they've created, uh, you know, when they're like, I'm not great at boundaries, but then they tell me the kind of boundary they tried to create. If they're good at boundaries, if they're not good at boundaries, I literally have a similar energetic reaction in my body where I literally start to cringe because I can feel the energy around that boundary is so constrictive that it's kind of squeezing the life out of that relationship on some level or it's creating some rule that doesn't give two people in that relationship the freedom to be themselves and to connect it's like somebody has to change or be different for it to have a connection the relationship the reason i call it it is like there's this thing called like the relationship between two people right there's me let's just say me and my husband there's me my husband and then there's the relationship that we create together and this is the case for any kind of relationship that we're in there's me that person and then the energetics of our energies mixing together that creates something different that we're then you know tending to in that relationship to try to keep connection when two people want to be connected right okay so boundaries the reason I have a cringy feeling is that most people are using them and maybe you found yourself doing this like, okay, mom, you can't call me five times a day anymore. You know, it's just too much and it's almost like you need me on some level and this is hard on me and I need to put my time and focus onto my child or my partnership or my business or my work, you know, and I don't have space for that when you're calling me five times a day, right? And so maybe you put up a boundary like that, or maybe the boundary is, mom, can you just not criticize me so much around how I parent? You know, can you just share with me places where you appreciate me? You see how I'm doing something good and share that with me. Maybe that's a boundary. Maybe there's a boundary around you're not allowed to show up at my house unannounced, right? You have to call before you come. All of those give me this little cringy feeling. Why? Why? Why does it give me that cringy feeling? Because when I think about real boundaries, and I don't even call them boundaries, when I call, when I talk about really understanding one another, which is my goal in each of my relationships, specifically with my mom, and I'm not saying that it's easy, I'm not saying there's some magic wand that I wave, that I know, that has my mom change and show up completely differently. It's not the case. I get very frustrated with my mom many a times. She often has a lot of opinions and a lot of ideas about how I should do things, and it's all coming from love, but it translates over here as I'm doing it wrong, or I should do it her way, or her way is the right way, or like I've gotta be perfect in some way for this to be done right and make her happy, right? We all have these feelings that absolutely come up and triggers that come up inside of us that stem from our childhood. And even the layers that I've worked through, I still have some layers when my mom does these things, right? So there's always more things to look at and work through that's never ending. And I'm committed to that because I can see the ways that my life has evolved and changed because of me working through this stuff with my parents in particular. But getting back to boundaries and mom, you know, what happens for me is I want my mom to understand me and I want to 
deeply understand her. And sometimes I will say, I don't know if she wants to totally understand me <laughs> because it's effort. It's effort on her part to have to put aside all of the things and ways she believes as a mother that this is right for me as her child, right? This is right for you. This is gonna make you better. This is gonna help you. This is gonna, uh, you know, change your world. You know, it's gonna make you look smarter. Um, all of those ways that she has, what she thinks I need, and to put that aside for her to just be with me is hard because she thinks all of those ways is showing me love. All of those ways is caring for me. All of those ways is really loving me. So to just be like, mom, can you just take a second to hear me, listen to me, be with me, um, see me for who I am, that feels harder for her, right? That feels harder. She has to put some of that stuff aside to be with me. And she may not agree with what I have to say, but here's what happens. So when I want my mom to understand how something felt painful for me or how it felt hard for me, I will actually just be completely bold and honest with her. And that's the first step that I take. And I say, mom, like I know, like just literally yesterday, we were cooking in the kitchen, right? And she's an amazing cook, my mother. And she's like, okay, I was making this Indian dish called dosa. And so I was making dosa and she goes, okay, you, you really wanna do it this way. And then when you pour the oil on, you wanna put it on the sides and in the middle. And everything in me was like, Ugh. like I like to put it in the middle. I don't like to put it on the sides. And I'm like, well, it doesn't really matter if I put it on the sides or not. I said that to her, right? She's like, but it does matter because then it helps it. You can, it's like a crepe, right? So it helps it peel off the pan in an easier way. And so I'm like annoyed inside, right? Cause it feels like, oh, why are you telling me what to do? And like, I've done this a, many, many times before. Not as many times as she has, but I've done this many a times before. And I think I do this well too. It's like my ego starts to erupt, right? And I wanna take back the control that I feel like she's trying to take away from me. And, and, or I just wanna shut down and just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes, her out of the kitchen, you know, and just do it my way. And instead of doing that, what I did was, yeah, Ma, I totally get it. Like, you know, putting it on the sides will help it come off too. Cause she is right about that. And I'm like, and there's not just like one way to do this, right? There's just not one way to do this. So what I tend to do is, and then I explained to her, like I put the oil down first, like a little layer, then I put the, the, the batter on, and then I put the oil on top. And I know if I put it on the sides, it'll probably help it. But because I put the oil on first, sometimes that also helps it too, you know? And she's like, yeah, that's true. That can also help it too. But the oil on the sides will really help, right? She like doubled down on it. And so I was just like, okay, that's fine. But what happened is that when I got the opportunity to actually share with her what I believed, why I did it the way I did it, what I've experienced in the past when I did it that way, I felt better. Like I wasn't shutting down and being like, okay, mom, you know, I just either have to do it her way to please her and I'm like resentful about that or that I just yes her and say yes, yes, yes and just try to dismiss her essentially and just do it my way so that I don't have to deal with it, right? Those are the two places that most of us go. Instead of actually taking a moment, taking time to intentionally explain your way and why your way is your way. There is no right way even though even in the back of my mind, because I have it that my mom is really good at cooking, that she's more right about this than me. And in some ways she is many times correct, but there's also a way that I can do it the way that I wanna do it, even though it's not her way, right? And maybe it's not even the better way, but it's just the way that I feel like doing it because it's the way that I wanna do it, right? But I took the time to explain it and she took the time to listen and even though she doubled down again on her way i felt better because i was like i feel like 
she acknowledged on some level my way, right? Now, let's say she didn't do that. Let's say she didn't acknowledge my way at all. Maybe she was just like, no, I still think you shouldn't do it that way. You should do it this way. But she did say like, yeah, that's actually a good way to do it, but and, you know, but and. And, uh, but let's just say she didn't do that. Let's just say she was just like, no, I think this is the better way. The way I could have handled that is, you know, mom, like when you do that, it actually makes me feel like I'm doing it all wrong. And often I know you have these suggestions out of love for me and out of like years and years and years of expertise and trial and error and, you know, doing it so many times. And I should listen to you about it. True, because you've done it so many times and you know how to do it. And there is also a way that I just want to try something different and do it on my own. And so can you understand that like I might have my own way that I want to do it, you know, and she could be like, yes, or she could be like, no, but here's what I do is I keep going. I keep going until I get some sort of acknowledgement. And sometimes I'll even say, mom, I just need you to acknowledge that I'm allowed to have my way, right? I need you to help Help me acknowledge that in this conversation because I often take it like you think your way is right and then therefore my way is wrong. And did you, do you remember how your mom did that to you too? How your mom thought that this one way was right and that's how she taught you and if you didn't do it that way, she didn't like it either. And you're doing that same thing to me. And so I just really want you to acknowledge my way too. So sometimes I'll put in a zinger like that and it's a zinger, not because I'm trying to zinger her. <laughs> it's a zinger because I'm really helping her get where I'm coming from. And I'm using her relationship with her parents as a way for her to get it. Because once you put your parent in that place, suddenly they're like, oh, they forget. They forget how they felt with their parents. And if you're a parent right now, you forget with your own child how it felt to be a child, right? And you're just like, I'm the parent, I know best. But do you remember what it felt like to be a child? Do you remember what it felt like to just be free and, and make mistakes and fall on the ground and fall off your bike and try again? And no, you've forgotten all of that. But if you take a moment and sit there and be like, what was that like? There's a smile that kind of comes over you and onto your face, because I even remember like, eating like a whole roll of candy, which you're not supposed to do, right? But it was like the most scrumptious thing in the world for me, right? When I was a kid and it was like fun and amazing. And then the sugar high was like fun too. And then I crashed and, but the whole thing was fun and exhilarating for me as a child. And as a parent, I look at it and I'm like, oh, that's not good for your teeth. And you're putting all the sugar in your body. You're gonna crash later. You're gonna get cranky. I'm gonna have to deal with that, right? And so we have this parent parent part of us that totally forgets what it was like to be a child. So I do these little zingers where I'm like, remember what that was like with your parent? And remember how it can feel painful and hurtful? And remember how it can feel like she's better than you? Remember all of that? Well, can you acknowledge me in this moment, right? So I wanted to walk you through that because that's a better way of trying to connect because what you're doing there is Will my mom forget that the next time she comes to my house and we're cooking something different? For sure. I don't, I don't think that she will remember that, okay, she said this the last time immediately, okay? Um, but what I do know is that she got a moment to understand me and I got a moment to feel that from her. And when we have that, the next time she comes, it doesn't feel as sharp to me when she does that again. Or the, the next time she comes, I can remind her, like, remember the last time we talked and I said all these things, I'm feeling that again, mom. So then she's reminded, okay, I gotcha. I don't wanna squash in my mom her way of loving me. Like that is not my goal. I don't want my child to squash my way of loving my child. And I also want my child to express when it feels like I'm trying to squash who they are and how they're doing things and 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 also tell me if I'm 
like making them feel unloved in some way. And in the same way, I want to treat my mom in that same way, where I want to explain to her how this is feeling like I'm not really cared for or how I'm really not feeling loved, but explain it, right? Explain it. And so this next part is, is for those of you that have kids and you feel like your parents and your mom in particular keeps telling you how to be a parent, right? I give you an example of like cooking just a minute ago, but I want to give you another example around parenting, right? It's the same philosophy, same steps, but if your mom is like, oh, when I was younger, I did this with you, right? Like I would take you in the sun. I, you know, we have, I have dry skin and that's in my family. And so when I was younger, she would take me into the sun. She would put cream on my body and we'd come out of the bath first, obviously. And then she put cream on my body in the sun so that I didn't feel so cold because we just came out of the shower, which is really beautiful and thoughtful. That's how my mom is. Meanwhile, I will be like, okay, we're just out of the, the, the shower. Let's put some cream on you, get your clothes on and keep moving, right? Like there's a way that I don't think through how cold my son will get. And I get that. And even my son complains about that, right? And so my mom would come in and be like, you should just take him into the sun. Like I used to take you into the sun and, and put cream on his body. And I'm sitting there like, Ugh, right? Like, Ugh. and here's the thing. She's right. Like that part, she's right. And even my son's like, yeah, I get so cold. And there's a way where you then as a parent do need to swallow this hard, shitty, sharp pill of my mom is right, you know, and humble yourself. She is right. Now, can you do it every time? Are you willing to do it every time? Maybe not, given the circumstances. But is she right about that? She's right. She's right. He'd feel warm. It'd feel good on his body. And I could take that extra effort to do that for him, right? So there are times where we need to do that. Now, then there's other times where we need to explain right? So we need to explain and help them get us, right? So I sometimes need to explain to my mom, like I have like a million things. Like I have my business that I'm trying to figure out. I want him to take a shower. I'm exhausted because I had a child at 38. I don't have the energy that, a, you know, a, a early 30 year old had. And so there's like all these elements that are playing out that I have to remind her of and say to her and explain to her. And the only way I can explain any of that, guess what, is when I've reflected upon it on my own in myself. Like what, what has me do things in the ways that I'm doing them and why do I do them that way? And then explain it to my mom. Right. And I do the same thing with my child, which goes such a long way, by the way, guys, if we take a moment to just think about why we do what we do in the way that we do it and then take a moment to explain that. Right. There is a way that somebody will start to get it if we continue to try to explain it and help them understand where we're coming from. So I wanted to give you that trajectory of what I do around my mom specifically around boundaries, around how I explain myself, around how I keep going, and around how I give examples of what it may have felt like for my mom with her mom or with her dad, because that seems to really bring her to a place of getting it, you know? And I know some of your moms are gonna be resistant to that and be like, yeah, but my mom was also like da 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 da, or my dad was also like da 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 da. But here's what I want to end with. No matter what, this is not what I call a belief battle. This is not an opportunity for your mom to be right and you concede or for you to be right so that she concedes. Often that's not going to happen. And often we're going to feel like we don't want to concede. They're going to feel like they don't want to concede. And now we're in a belief battle, battling it out. She believes this. I believe that we're battling it out, right? And I want to help you transcend belief battles. And so to transcend those belief battles, it either requires a humbleness to take that sharp pill of they are right 
at moments. Our parents are right in specific ways. They do have some wisdom. They do know how to do things and have done them a million times more than we have because their life is literally half as much as us, most of our parents at least. And also, they're wrong because there's so many perspectives to doing any one thing. And there's so many ways to do any one thing right? And so we don't want to get into belief battles. We want to transcend back into love and connection. And the way, the path towards that is first for you to be like, I want to explain this and to ask for that acknowledgement. And they will probably still believe what they believe. And you will probably still believe what you believe. But the next level of this work, I will tell you, is to combine the two things together, what they believe and what you believe to create something even more superior, right? And if you can do that, now we're talking because now our parents feel like they're gotten, we feel we're gotten, and nobody has to battle it out anymore, right? Nobody has to prove that they are right first and you transcend this whole cycle. So that's what I want for you, is to transcend this whole belief battle cycle. And so I'm giving you the tools of how to do that and not just put up a wall or a boundary or a rule that your parent has to follow to be in your life, to be a part of their grandchildren's life, to be in your world, because that would feel shitty if your child one day does that to you too. You know, it would feel really shitty. So I encourage you to take in all those perspectives. Take this in, make it your own, try it out, see what happens. Let me know in the comments what comes through. You can come back to this video and tell me afterwards. Or if you've tried something already, tell me below. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. There's more videos like this where I really describe to you as a relationship coach for over 14, 15 years, the dynamics that I see between us and our families, us and our partners, us and our children, that are all connected into how we were raised, what we saw with our families, and through all of that collecting of data and experience over the 14 years, I'm sharing with you that wisdom. So hit subscribe and I will see you in the next video. And if you've ever said to yourself, I feel like my mom, my dad, they're narcissistic or they're toxic in some way, I have created a video on that too, which is all about how that might not actually be true and maybe blocking you in your life to believe that. So check that out now, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.